Welcome to the Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. I'm your host, Rolling Bubba Grimes. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a graduate of Syracuse University, the number one communication school in the world. Class race with Mike Tirico, Quadri Ismail, Daryl Moose Johnson, and a whole bunch of other alumni. Having said that, we have some gentlemen here from George Washington and George Mason, right here near the D, right here around the DMV, and we're going to get we're going to get to know them very well. We're shooting here, taping live from the Society Lounge, 8229 Georgia Avenue, Silver Spring, Maryland. And as always, put your hands together for my resident co-host, Mr. Self-Empowerment, Wilbert Skipper. <laughs> All right, the butterflies are gone. <laughs> We're sitting here with my man, Jason Mascari. Jason is the owner of Society Lounge, the place where we're shooting at today. We're going to get started right now. Jason, my pleasure. Pleasure. My glad, pleasure. Glad, glad, glad that you decided to have us here. I can't get glad out to save my life. Okay. Here we go. Jason, tell me a little bit about your pedigree. Where are you originally from, and how did you get here, man? Well, I grew up uh, about five minutes away from here, Tacoma Park, Maryland. Tacoma Park, Maryland. Yeah. Love you and your five brothers, sisters? <laughs> no, three, three sisters and one brother. Okay. I'm the baby in the family. Okay. Yeah, so came back home and tried to do something real nice and upscale that they haven't seen in the Silver Spring area, and so far it's been great. Well, look, man, we really love the uh, love the accoutrements here, man. We uh, love Steve Francis and I grew up together. We actually had the same age. Um, we went to the draft the same time. Um, I'm a local guy that went to George Mason University with a full scholarship, coming from uh, Rockville, MC. Basketball. Yes. Absolutely. Full and scholarship you know I'm basketball. excited now. We're talking basketball. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Finally, basketball is dominating the set. <laughs> yeah, so I had the opportunity to, uh, to do real well in uh, college. Um, Main first team all conference, top five in three categories. Um, after graduating from George Mason University, I was selected to the top ten point guards in the nation. Okay. And I, I participated in the pre jab camp in Chicago. Okay. Wasn't drafted. Um, was supposed to go 31st, but kept working hard and grinding and had the opportunity to make the opening roster for the Charlotte Hornets. Well, if you had played football, Absolutely. we have like seven <laughs> rounds. So you only have three. Uh, Skip, b- before Skip jump, jumps in, here's the thing. Uh, what year did you come out of George Mason? I came out in 99. Okay. And what did you study while you were there? Psychology. Okay. Skip. Well, Jason, you know I'm excited. Because off camera, we talked about some similarities that we had. Absolutely. You played at a JUCO? Yes. Right out of high school? I played at a JUCO right out of high school. You went to George Mason? I went to the other George, George Washington. (laughs) So we talked about what we have in common. Now, for a lot of the young kids out here that are playing sports, can you speak to why it's important to not only think that you have to go to a Division One school or a Division Two school right out of high school, especially if you're having some issues with your grades and you need to better your skills, can you talk a little bit about that and how that helped you? Because I know it helped change my life as well. Absolutely, and I and I and I speak on it all the time. I also have my own camp, five years, it's Missouri Fundamental Basketball Camp, uh, right in my alumni Blair High School. I host the camp, and I tell the kids all the time, and I would tell any kid. It was the best decision I've ever made in my life. I had the opportunity to go to junior college and was able to polish my game. I was a small kid. I actually was still grown in junior college. And the biggest thing was for me to be able to concentrate on the books. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I earned my A degree. And back then, you couldn't get a full scholarship unless you graduated from junior college. Absolutely. And I was able to do that. So it was a very proud moment for me. Went to George Mason University and was able to make a great impact uh, my first year there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that always amazes me when guys can take the other route and still come out and do well versus jumping right to Division One. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying, folks, if you have the talent, you have the grades, that you should not go to a Division One, Division Two, or Division Three school. However, you have to know that going the junior college route like Jason Mascara did and wanted to have a great career, and myself, yes, Mr. Powell, Mr. Self Empowerment, which is JUCO as well, is not a bad route to take. No, absolutely not. I mean, that opportunity is so, the bottom line is this. You can't go pro 
nowadays till two years out of, of, of co in college anyway. So you might as well use that opportunity if you're not going to play right away and you need to fix your grades, you need to polish your game up, you can go to a very powerful junior college, make an impact, and then instead of getting five letters, now you got 30 letters. Exactly. You exactly. know, so it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing, and that was the best decision I ever made in my life. Now, what were some of those lessons you learned when you went to George Mason? What two or three things did you learn there that you think affected you for the rest of your life? I had the opportunity to play with, and everyone knows him, his name is Jim Larry Nate. He's at Miami right yeah. now. And he's, doing, and he's doing a wonderful job. Absolutely. He's the yeah. winning his coach in CAA history. Um, his first year was my first year. So we kind of... So you grew up together. Exactly. We built we built that that dynasty together. Hey, Jim. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, because Jim yeah. is probably going to be watching the show. You might as well just sit it down to you, oh, Jim. Let, let Jim know how you feel about it. I mean, he knows. I mean, yeah. he, he's like a father figure to me. He's um He's been around... In my life, even after graduating from college, his wife used to tutor me personally, Mama L, um, and he always tells me personally that I'm one of the biggest reasons why he is where he is today. And you know, it's it, it's it's it touches that's, me. Well, yeah, it's that's funny, a high compliment. Because my high school football coach and my college coach, their words are still ringing in my ears to this day. You know, <laughs> Give no quarter, ask no quarter, no excuses. I mean, the whole nine, you know, uh, disregard all extraneous stimuli. What did Jim, Coach Jim tell you that still rings in your mind to this day? Just being a man after the after sports. You know, he knew that my dream was to play in the NBA, and he would tell any agent, any scout that came to watch me that that's his dream. Don't even talk about overseas. Yeah. You know, this is what he wants to do, and I believe he can do it. Um, yeah. And which I did, and I mean, it, it just just his presence. It's just he's so organized. He's so just disciplined and making sure that everybody's on the same page. He treats everyone equally. Um, I mean, it was just a, it's a thrill and a pleasure to, to have him as a coach for those years. Well, I've been around a, a coach named Jim too up in Syracuse itself. Uh, his <laughs> last name is Bayheim. Y'all might have heard of him too. So yeah. to you too, Coach Jim's out there. Thumbs up for all that you've done for these young men. Coming up, hey folks, we're gonna pay some bills right now. <laughs> Let's take a break. Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. Right back at, at you in a few minutes with my man Jason Mascari. Thank you, <laughs> Jason. Who was your favorite player or players growing up? That's a tough one, honestly and truly. Your friend, my friends would tell you, I never really had a favorite player. Really? No. I didn't even watch basketball that much. Okay, I was just a guy we'll, okay, that played. Explain it, this. It's he, complicated. He's a different kind of basketball. It's, okay. it's complicated. Uh, all right. <laughs> complicated for us, then. In a, good, in a good way. That's okay. What I did was I, I practiced a lot on my own. Not that I didn't watch basketball. I did. But I wasn't, I wasn't too concerned about his name or that guy's name. So you I weren't starstruck about that? About nah, that. I was, not at all. You know, you had a much more business pragmatic approach to exactly. the game. In fact, I, I love when I played against the big name guys. Okay. You know, that, that motivated me to go out there and do well, and most of the times I did. Okay. So, well, now, from a mentoring standpoint, and oftentimes on the show, Roland and I, we talk about mentorship. We know that is a very, very com a big component that a lot of kids don't have. Absolutely. When you were coming up, who would you say was the, the single most or a couple people that you kind of, you know, follow in their footsteps, not from a basketball perspective, but just from a growing up, a life perspective that helped you throughout uh, your, your college career? Calvin Avant, Otis Matthews, Tony Langley. Those are coaches that I had early on in life that um, kind of steered me in the right direction from the beginning. Although I may have j jumped off path a few times, but they were always in my, on my back about doing right. Yeah. As I got older, Steve Hobson, my junior college coach, Jim Larinaga, of course, um, that helped me grow as a man. Uh, but those are the positive figures that I that I can say offhand, not to mention a, a few others. But um, they kind of really helped me to be what I am today. All right. So you made a shift somewhere down the road. You went from all-star athlete. Psychology major, and now you're restaurant business. Yes. 
Tell us how that it's happened. Happen. Well, that was free playing, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> you read, you read no. his journal when he was a kid, right? I've been asked this question tons of times, but grow, never on camera, though, right? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> First time. Grow, growing up in Tacoma Park, I'm from the I'm from the Caribbean. I was born again, so I kind of introduced the whole Caribbean f- spice. And food and flavor. So any parties I had, my graduations, they were able to have the curry chicken, the rice and peas, the plantains, the, the roti, those things. Because we never ate out a lot. Right. We had home cooked meals, and you know, of course, as, as you guys are familiar with the flavor that we put into our food. Um, and I love to cook. I love to eat. I love to cook. So I, you know, for all these years, I said people are eating for free. I might as well do something <laughs> now. Makes sense. Yeah, so I opened a, a small curry out in, in Lowell called Island Flavors. Okay. And I've uh, been in existence for um, five years now. Uh, it's a lot smaller than Society Lounge, but when I came to Silver Spring, this opportunity fell on my lap, um, and I took advantage of it. And my vision was to make it very upscale, nice, where people can come and be social, yeah. and add a little em- entertainment to it as well. You know, the valet parking out front, the marble, uh, the granite countertops, the TVs, all those things is what I wanted to bring to, to Silver Spring because they didn't have that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you have your chain restaurants, but you don't have something that people can feel they can come in and just interact with each other yeah. and just have a good time and be social, you know? Yeah. Well, it's definitely live. We can hear them. Yeah. We, can, we heard them last time. We can hear them this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. now, Jason, you talked uh, a little bit earlier about the basketball game. Yes. That you have. Yes. Um, what are some of the core values that has been instituted in your life mm-hmm. that you teach to the young kids when they come into your camp? Education is number one. Discipline. And I tell all kids, follow your dreams. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't be what you want to be. And I went as far as telling them, you, either your mother or your father. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, if you want to be a basketball player, if you want to be a doctor or what have you, do it to your best ability, okay? Now, you can't do that and don't do school. Absolutely. Then they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. Yeah. You understand? But just work on it because at the end of the day, if you don't succeed in whatever that is, you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I tried. Exactly. But if you don't, then you're going to have doubts about things later on in life and you don't need to. And, you know, just, just playing basketball, even though this is a restaurant, I was still able to use some of those core values that absolutely, I learned absolutely. and bring it here. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Discipline and making sure that the teamwork that is, is involved. And, you know, it's, it's a struggle and it is, it is still tough, but we're, we're getting better at it. Yeah. Well, I know this. Cooking for your friends for free is one thing. <laughs> Turning it into an entrepreneurial endeavor yes. is quite another mother. It is. It's, it's definitely a, another mother. So mother. what's wrong with it? <laughs> <laughs> No. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 but see, I love challenges. Right. You know, I love challenges. I've always had to jump over obstacles, and That's right, and, 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 yeah. and each and every time, I've proven myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I was with the shot of Hornets for a short period of time, but how many people can say that they made an opening NBA roster? roster absolutely. Not a that's lot. One, that's one of the hardest things to do. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I didn't make it. Yeah, I didn't make you know, it. So you're, you're right. it's, it, it's, you know, so it's, I'm, I'm proud of what I've done, um, but it is it is a challenge and one that I don't mind taking yeah. taking on. All right, Skip, we're going to take a station break. And Jason, if you don't mind, we want to get in this business with you. We want to help blow society lounge up as much as possible. Absolutely. And if necessary, we'll take it all over the world. You know how we do. <laughs> hey, folks, Rolling Grimes. Not just sports entertainment show here with my man Jason Muscari. We're going to take a station break. We'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're so kind. We're going to come back here in a couple of weeks and we're going to do this again. Rolling Grimes. Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show out here with my main man, Mr. Selvin Palmer, Wilbur Skipper, and Jason Muscari here at the Society Lounge in Silver Spring, Maryland. 
Before we cut away, Jason, we were talking about what the heck is wrong with you, but we figured it out already. We talked about it. You lack challenges, all that good stuff. Tell us, you, you mentioned earlier about some of the appointments and some of the things you've done here at Society Lounge to make it a little more upscale for the area, and we do appreciate that. Having said that, how do you make those decisions on what goes into your establishment? How do you make decisions about the, the countertops, the marble, the rugs, the rolling grind show? How does this committee come together and make these decisions? Well, it started with me. Uh, the vision that I wanted to kind of is, 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 is what you see now. Okay. I did have some help with my designers, um, Riggio Design and uh, Space 21 Design. They helped me, I'm sorry, Space 26 Design helped me to form my vision. Okay. Um, but playing basketball and being able to see and experience nice venues throughout my career helped me to envision what I wanted to, to have at Society Lounge. You know, you know, what better convenience but to have valet parking out front? Absolutely. For $5. You go to the city, you're paying 20 bucks. Yeah. You can't get Valley anywhere for five bucks. Exactly. Yeah. And you're going to get A1 service out, uh, out front with Crystal pla uh, Parking. Um, I take care of the other half because I want people to come in here and enjoy themselves. Here it is. So, folks, anywhere in the country, and, and you know you watch this show from California to Washington, D.C., anywhere in the world, Macedonia, Iran, all you folks watching the Rolling Ground show right now, when you come to the Washington, D.C. area, make sure you put on your calendar a stop at the Society Lounge. Skip, I'm going to let you take over for And I would like to just add on to what Roland was just saying about the Society Lounge. Listen, if you haven't had an opportunity to come here, you need to do so. The food is outstanding. The drinks are awesome. The, the staff is good. I want to give a shout-out to a young lady that did not want to be on the show. We offered Nancy. She's played a, a, a big role oh, in absolutely. helping put this together with the Rolling Grounds, not just sports and entertainment show. And we are so grateful and thankful to be able to be a part of this with you, Jason. Absolutely. 2013 is here, and we're happy to be a part of the Society Lounge. So I just want to say that to all the folks that are watching the show while you're here with us. No, I appreciate it. I'm glad you guys are here. I mean, I love sports. I, 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 you know, I'm not shy by any means yeah. to be on the camera, but I think this is a good thing to add to what we already have going on here at Society Lounge, and I welcome you guys, and hopefully we can well, build into something big. Bro, can, can you I know I'm going to ask about the menu next. Right, right, right. Right. Okay. So, so can I just throw one more thing? Yeah, and, please, and, 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 make and, it and this is something, folks, that Jason and I, this, is, this is, was not pre-rehearsed. I didn't talk to him about it, but I'm going to go ahead and make a challenge to you, Jason, because we both did the same thing. We played basketball. Now, you're, you're actively still playing basketball. I, I am not actively playing. <laughs> but I can still shoot the rock. So, unless you and I get together, we don't have to make no wagers or anything like that, but let's get together and play a game of horse. Sure. And, and, and let's show the folks, and, and Roland, I have a great idea. Jason and I get together and play a game of horse. We'll have a Roland Grimes show, tape it. And then we'll take that and let's show the world Jason's other time. Okay, okay, look, that's a great okay. idea. Skip, that's a great idea. However, before you do, we need our resident fitness trainer on the show, we, Eugene he's Allen, he's here. <laughs> to get you ready. No, 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 we no. don't want a Charlie horse. No, 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 no. We don't want any busted no. Achilles here. No, a horse is different. Horse is totally different from playing football. Oh, oh, it's not like we no, played no, it in football. No, 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 this horse in football, <laughs> we, you know. No, 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 no. Football players played horse. No, this is a little different. Let me just say we very beat quick. each other. We beat each other up a little. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. This is how it's gonna go. We're okay. gonna get back to Jason. Okay. Jason, I gonna flip a coin. Flip a coin. He take heads, I take tails. Gotcha. If he wins, he gets a chance to go first, and whatever shot he wanna perform, he can do it. If he makes it. I have to match. It. Now, what if he dunks? If he dunks, then I'm gonna get a stare. Stairs, <laughs> and I'm gonna climb up no, the steps, you're gonna and I'm gonna dunk. You go. Yeah, you ain't gonna, gonna, gonna worry about that no, no more. You gonna take that eight? No, no. <laughs> no, we we have somebody here. Doctor Tappen is here. One thing Doctor Tappen has taught me is to be able to improvise. So I would use my improvising skills you, to make that. And happen. you will have to look. Here's yeah. the thing. We're gonna bring the cameras out. Yeah. You guys set that date. We're going to have an entire crew of people around, and we're going to laugh till we can't laugh anymore. <laughs> Jason, that's going to be fun. <laughs> we on, Jason? Yeah, yeah, we on. We got, got a deal. deal. You got a deal. All right, Skip, I'm going to let you finish up with Jason. Go well, ahead, man. in closing, I just want to commend you, first of all, for being able to travel the road that you did. I mean, it's not easy, folks. You know, growing up as a kid, 
especially in the Washington, D.C. area, having a dream and having to worry about people trying to take your dreams away from you. You know, you have obstacles, you have hurdles, you have all these things that we have to go through. Yes. Your role, your, the way you came through the ranks is similar to what I did. Absolutely. And we had a lot of people that said we couldn't make it. Yep. We made it. They said we couldn't play high school basketball. We did. Yep. They said we couldn't play junior college basketball. We did. They said we couldn't play D1 basketball. We did. You went further than I did if you actually had an opportunity to play in the NBA, which is great. But at the same time, if, if folks, if you don't get anything else out of this, this young man has, has climbed the mountain. He has come from little of nowhere, and now he's the owner of the Society Lounge. And I just want to commend you for that, Jason, because I think your story is one that a lot of young kids out here need to see and say to themselves, despite the odds that are against you, you can make it. And you are a true example of that. Thank you so much. No question. It. Jason, it's a pleasure. Hey, real quick. I know you like to cook. Tell me what's your specialty so I can make sure that I order that and eat it with Dr. Tappan tonight, <laughs> tomorrow, and the next day. Two things. The curry shrimp croquettes. I can't even pronounce that, man. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> you sit, you sit there with a straight face. <laughs> say, say it one more time, folks. <laughs> listen, listen out for uh, this. Okay. Now, folks. What is it again? What the the curry, curry shrimp croquettes. Okay. Okay. Which is three large shrimp and curry sauce over top a fried potato. Wow. Okay. And, well, fried mashed potatoes. So you know what a cool kid is. Yeah. The other thing is a whole snapper with the head on. The whole fish is about with the a pound and a half. With the thing looking at me. Yes, it's called brown stew snapper to serve with rice oh, and yeah. peas oh, yeah. and spinach. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, one day we're going to have to try that. We're going to have to take <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to send a shout out to my daughter, Jayana, baby. I love you. Hey. I want to send a shout out to the, to the first Caribbean restaurant that I ever attended, Jerk Hut. Up in Syracuse, New York. <laughs> hey, man, when you connect with my man Jason, you guys can cook like nobody's business. Hey, folks, with my man Jason, Wilbur Skipper, Mr. self Apartment. This is Roland Bubba Grimes signing off for the Roland Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. We look forward to seeing you again real, real soon. God bless.